Now then, so we're going to do some yoga today for heart opening. Um, I'm going to suggest we have a cushion or a blanket. A cushion and a blanket is great, but a cushion certainly, uh, before we get started. And I like to have something soft for my knees, so you might want that too. You can bring your hands to your knees as you're sitting cross-legged. I'll give you a minute just to get yourself ready. And we'll start by just simply dropping the heart back as you exhale, taking your chin to your chest, and then rolling your pelvis, which ripples up through the spine and allows your heart to move forwards between your arms and your gaze will lift. We'll just move like that slowly, very slowly, as we begin to integrate the way that we breathe with the way that we move. And we're gathering information, we're listening in as to how our back's feeling today. There is a, a real relationship between what's happening with the weather and how your body is feeling. And obviously our clocks have gone back, so we are really moving towards winter now. And our bodies know that. The same way that the plants know. The animals, the animals. So if you're of hibernation inclination, then that's going to start to be moving through your bones. Okay, and then whilst we're working with the spine, let's take those lovely circles. You can use your hands to stabilize yourself. Exhaling as you move backwards and then inhaling as you roll forwards. Going slowly. And then switching directions. And then come to center and do whatever little wriggle your body would like you to do. So these, um, the side of the ribs have these intercostal muscles between each rib. And very often when I'm doing a massage treatment on someone, it's when I, when I put pressure on those that loads of emotion comes, down, comes out. And I think that it's almost like the ribs, obviously, as a, as a skeletal structure, are protecting the heart and the lungs. But I think more than that, the muscles are protecting the emotion that we are um, perhaps trying to keep out or perhaps trying to keep in. So when we start to move this sort of wriggly, mermaidy kind of movement, it might be... It might be the first time you've really felt how those intercostal were doing. One side might feel quite different to the other. And let's inhale and reach your arms up overhead. Fingertips pointing up towards the sky. Fold the elbows. And as you take your next deep breath in, let your tummy expand and become a real Buddha belly. And as you exhale, draw the belly back towards the spine. It's a good way to know what's going on in your shoulders. So for myself, as I'm here, my right shoulder is really comfortable and dropping down, and there's loads of space for my neck and 
space between shoulder and ear. And then on the left-hand side where I've got a bit of frozen shoulder, it's taking my shoulder up towards my ear and it's much harder for me to draw that shoulder blade down. So they, these are little nuances that we notice in ourselves when we come into these shapes. So notice for yourself, what's going on with your shoulders? What's going on with your rib cage? How does your breath want to adapt into this shape? And then releasing your arms, take your hands behind your back, interlink your fingers, press the palms away, opening up across the front of the chest as you look up. And breathe into the front of your lungs. And then releasing, let's give our hands a shake. And then we'll bring the right hand down and sweep the left hand across. And take the right hand behind and then sit up tall. And here you might want to add some wriggling. It's a great place to breathe this rotation. So we're breathing in and out through the nose, allowing your jai breath, if that's something that you are familiar with. And then releasing, coming back to center, and then placing the left hand down, right hand comes across, left hand comes behind, and inhale as you sit up, tall, and exhale as you rotate. So with a heart practice, when you're in this rotation, bring your awareness to the back of your heart, the space between your shoulder blades. So that column that runs down between the center of the, the space between the shoulder blades, again, in massage, when that area is touched so often, it's the most locked up, the most tender, the most sensitive. So, Without having a massage, you can bring your awareness there and just invite the muscles to soften. Invite a sense of openness. And come back to center. And we'll drop that right hand down again, and this time we'll reach the left arm up and over. You might just keep walking that right hand away, but keep the left sitting bone grounded and keep the height through the heart so you're not collapsing at any time. There is a sense of, of elevation through the ribs, through the heart. And Mulabanda is still here, the pelvic floor is engaged and you're drawing in through the lower belly. And then with your breath, as you exhale, you're gonna draw up that left hand down to the other side of the front knee. And come into a little side fold. And then inhale as you come up. And I invite you to move super slowly. And to adapt this to suit you, I'm not sure how this is on my left shoulder, so I might just drop my hand a little lower. And now that feels easier. So there's always opportunity to adapt the movement to suit you. Inhale as you come back up 
just take a moment to rest both hands on either knee. Come back to your midline and then drop your left hand down. Perhaps it walks a little further away. The right sitting bone stays grounded and the right arm rises up. And see if you can find that sense of light, breezy openness through the ribs, through the heart. And then as you exhale, little side fold. Feels so different on this side. Inhale as you come up. It might be true for you too. And when you notice where you're feeling it, it won't just be, or it's unlikely to just be in the torso. You might even feel it in your legs, in your hips. You might feel it in your neck. There's a tensegrity to your body that holds you in a permanent state of togetherness by rippling out the effect of your movement through all areas. And then inhale as you come back to center. We'll take our legs straight out in front. Point our toes. Take your hands behind with your fingers pointing towards your sitting bones. Soften your elbows. Actually, we might do something different first. Let's bend our knees, bring the heels in a little closer. We'll come into tabletop first. And as you inhale, the hips and the heart lead. You look up towards the ceiling. Exhale as you come down. And then straighten your legs and point your toes. We'll do the same again, but keeping the legs straight this time. See if you can get your heart and your hips just a little higher. Keep the breath strong. And exhale as you come down. And then we'll sweep the legs back and come to all fours. And starting from the tailbone, we'll let the ripple effect of cat and cow be felt through the body. So starting by tilting the tailbone down and letting the spine move until eventually your chin tucks towards your chest. And then letting the tailbone move as the ripple travels up through the spine and your heart lunges forward between your arms and your gaze rises towards the front of the mat. Tailbone leads. Perhaps you can get a sense of the fluidity of your spine. Turning back to neutral, walking your hands forwards. Keep your bottom up high and melt your heart down towards the air. Deep, deep breaths here. And then walk your hands across to the right. Place your left hand on top of your right hand. Draw your hips back and take a nice sort of crescent moon stretch to the torso. And 
the pitch of your practice is entirely dependent on your breath. If you allow a deeper breath, then the stretch will become deeper too. Inhale as you walk back to center. And then take the hands across to the left. Right hand can come to rest on top of left. Hips rock back. And breathe. Inhale as you come back, walk your hands in, returning to a little bit more cat and cow. Make it quite exploratory, it doesn't have to look or appear a certain way, you just let it be whatever wriggles you'd like to do for your spine this morning. And we'll add a little bit of flow before we do some seated poses. Checking the time. Inhale, take the right leg out behind. Exhale, bring the knee forward, palm the hands, the foot between the hands. Inhale as you reach your arms up. And exhale, bring your hands to your heart. Hips are heavy, heart is lifting. Inhale, reach your arms up. And exhale, hands to the floor, bringing the knees back together. Inhale, extend the left leg. Exhale, bring that foot between your hands. Inhale, reach your arms up. And exhale, hands to heart. A few breaths. Do whatever wriggle is needed to stay with you, to stay inside your body. Inhale, arms up, and exhale, hands to the floor, knees back together. Inhale, right leg back. Exhale, foot forward. Let's keep the left hand down, reach the right arm up. Exhale. Right hand stays down, the left arm comes up. Exhale. Inhale, both arms rise. Exhale, hands to heart. Inhale, float the ribs. And exhale, take that left elbow across and bring a little twist. Inhale, raise the arms up. Exhale, hands to the floor, knees together. Inhale, left leg back. Exhale, left foot forward. Left, right hand stays down, left hand rises. Exhale. Left hand stays down, right hand rises. Exhale. Inhale, both arms. Exhale, hands to heart. Inhale, lift the ribs. And exhale, right elbow comes across, palm stack. Little rotation. Whilst you're in the rotation, maybe your hips can come a little further forward. So there's a little bit more of a lunge coming into this shape. Inhale, both arms up. Exhale, both hands down. Knees come together. Let's lay down on our tummies. Forehead to the floor, arms either side of your body, fingers pointing down towards your heels. Push your hips into the ground 
And as you inhale, lift just the ribs, just the collarbones, maybe the chest. Quite a small movement and exhale as you come back up. Pelvis presses in towards the earth as you inhale and come up maybe a little bit higher. And exhale as you come down. And then for the third time, we're going to come up with legs as well. Unless that's uncomfortable, keep the legs down if you prefer. And we'll pause for, for five breaths here. Lowering yourself down. Bring your hands either side of your chest. Push down through your hands to sit back on your heels, coming into extended prayer pose. And then inhale as you come up. We're going to do some seated forward folds. I'll turn to face you. The legs straight out in front. Here's where the cushion becomes super handy. So sitting on the edge of the cushion is a really nice support for the pelvis. It gives you a tiny tilt. You really are perching on the edge, though you're not right sitting right in the middle of the cushion. And then the toes are pointing up towards the sky and the heels are pushing out away from you. You can just play with doing that and then releasing that. And notice maybe something happens in your pelvis or maybe you can add something happening in your pelvis. So when the legs are strong, the pelvic floor lifts. And just rest your hands either side of you. Take a circle through your shoulders. And be sure your neck's happy with what you're up to. And we'll breathe a few breaths here. And really this, this pose, it's called the staff pose, is all about mulabanda. So it's this drawing in and up through the pelvic floor, setting the foundation for all your forward folds. Because they, they offer a really good opportunity to get a little bit more awareness, awakeness within the pelvis. Okay, as you inhale, let's bring both arms up. And we do this to get some height and some length through the side body. And then we're going to try and keep that length and height as you bring your hands down and slowly start to walk your hands forwards. Be very gentle and kind with yourself. It's very early in the morning. Your forward fold is unlikely to look as glamorous as it might look by 10 o'clock this morning. So go gently. You're welcome to soften your knees as much as you want to. Because there's no end shape in mind here, really. It's more just invitation for communication. What's going on? Can I listen to what's happening in my spine? How do my legs feel? Amazing. And then inhale as you come back up. And we're going to bend the right knee and take hold of the big toe of the right foot. And then lift that foot up off the floor. I'm not sure my angle is that helpful for you. I just play with moving that foot forwards and back, which will mean the knee goes out behind your armpit. And still the pelvic floor is a part of this practice. And then release the big toe, place the sole of the foot on the inner thigh. And I have a knee that flies quite high when I do this. It's called Jani Shisasana, usually a very popular pose. But if your knee flies high like mine, then the cushion might be better off just underneath your thigh. Because what happens then is this inner thigh um, 
rotation in the hip is able to lengthen. If the knee is flying, there's a lot contracting to hold it in place. And that's the opposite of what we're trying to achieve. So do use your cushion if, if the knee is up off the floor. Toes are pointing up towards the sky. Hands are either side of your leg. Inhale as you sit up. And as you exhale, gently start to walk your way forwards. As much and as slow as feels sweet inside your body. Inhale as you come back up. Bring that knee up. Extend your legs out in front of you again. We'll do the same on the other side. So taking hold of the big toe of the left foot. Bring the foot up. And then start to move the foot forwards and back. So the knee moves out to the back of your armpit. It's kind of a little um, happy baby pose, really. Seated happy baby pose. And then release and bring the sole of the foot to the inner thigh. Prop with your cushion if you prefer. Toes pointing up. Inhale as you sit up. Take a moment to settle. Let the connective tissue catch up. And then exhale as you come forward. And I'm stay curious about how your breath is changing this. Forward folds are probably one of the most um, nourishing places to take a deep breath. You're really aware, you can hear it and you can feel it. You can sense it as you breathe a deeper breath. Inhaling as you come back up. We'll cross our legs. Bring our hands to our hearts. Offering the fruits of our practice always to all beings. Namaste.